Hey, welcome to my channel. Thanks for clicking on the video. And if you like to stay up to date on the latest camera news, as well as get tips and tricks for your cameras, definitely consider subscribing. Now today we're talking about the Canon R3 and the fact that not only have we confirmed that it's pretty much going to be a 30 megapixel sensor, but also that there's going to be announcement in a couple of days from Canon as to maybe the full specs of this camera should be interesting. Check it out. This sensor is probably not going to be 21 or 24, but potentially closer to 30 to 35 megapixels. So yeah, it wasn't too long ago. In fact, earlier this month, I put out a video saying that, hey, I think that the Canon R3 is going to be more than 24 megapixels, which was the theory that the camera was going to be 24 megapixels at the time. I said it's going to be at least 30 to 35 megapixels. Well, Canon rumors confirmed that it's about going to be like 30.1 megapixels, which seems just about right. Now, my speculation was that it was going to be that type of resolution because in like the videos and the specs that they had in, in Canon's website in particular, they said that it was going to shoot oversampled 4K and high quality 4K, which to me is like two different types of 4K. And for something like that, especially if you're going to shoot full frame 4K or a crop 4K that's oversampled, you need a megapixel count that's going to be pretty high, especially if you're cropping in, because then it really won't be that oversampled. So my theory was that it's got to be like 30 to 35 megapixels. And it turns out it's going to be like 30.1 megapixels. Now looking at the specs next to me, I also see pretty much things that we might have known or expected from this camera. Multi-controller and smart controller, very angle touchscreen. We knew that, 30 frames per second. Eight stops of optical and image stabilization combined. 4K Canon Log 3, the ability to record RAW internally. LPE 19 batteries, all this stuff we knew. But now that we can confirm the megapixel count of the sensor, this means a couple of things. It's not going to shoot AK RAW. It'll, it'll become close, but it can't shoot AK RAW because of the fact that the resolution that you need for AK RAW, for example, on a full frame sensor, has to be at least 45 megapixels. And that's why the Canon R5 is 45 megapixels. But what you can get from a 30 megapixel camera is still a pretty high resolution over five, close to actually about 6K in recording. So you could probably get like a 6K video that's down sampled to 4K because they didn't say that we're going to do anything higher than 4K. So you're going to have 4K internal recording, 4K raw, which is still great. But if they actually let you use more of that sensor and just count pixel for pixel, perhaps you'll get 6K raw on this R3. So that's kind of my prediction, but that's usually using obvious specs in mind when it comes to that. So we'll get 6K raw, but I bet you that the 6K raw will not overheat. I believe that this camera body is going to be big enough so that you don't have to deal with any overheating issues, which is great because you'll have a high-end Canon camera that's higher end than the Canon R5, shoots 30 frames per second photos with a stacked CMOS sensor and has got a very angle touch screen and it's got the ability to record RAW internally, up to 6K RAW internal. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it could do 4K 120. And it would be interesting if it did 1080p 240, which Canon has not really done in their mirrorless or DSLR cameras. So at the very least, they'll put um, 1080p 120 frames per second, potentially 4K 120 frames per second. I think it's likely because 4K to 120 frames per second, if you can calculate that off of an 8K sensor, then you could probably do it with this roughly 6K sensor. So that'll be interesting to see when this camera can basically out-resolute the Canon C70 because it's going to do 6K instead of just limited to 4K and do 4K 120 frames per second. One question that I do have is what's the dynamic range of video? I would imagine that with this camera they'd include Canon Log 3 but potentially they could include Canon Log 2 and if they did include Canon Log 2 without needing to record RAW 
what would that turn into in post-production, especially when it comes to the meaning of the dynamic range that you can get off of this camera? Because you've got the Canon C70, for example, that can get about, realistically, 15 stops of dynamic range, which is just beautiful for a video camera, and it really adds that extra amount of depth and information that you can get out of a scene thanks to its expanded dynamic range. Would you get the same out of the R3? I would bet not. I bet from a real production standpoint, it would probably be similar to the Canon R5, where you get like 12 and a half, maybe 13 stops of dynamic range using C-Log3, or potentially you can get that much off of C-Log2 if that's what comes with the camera. It's not bad, but it won't be cinema levels of recording. I think that they'll save for their cinema line and kind of leave out of these photography-based cameras. The Canon R3 is really going to be a camera and is meant to be a camera for photographers, especially sports photographers, trying to take photos of fast action and have the ability to just crank out those photos and then go in production and post. Now, its competing camera, or one would think that the Sony A1 would compete with the R3, but it's an interesting perspective that you've got there because the A1 is a very fast camera and in compressed RAW, it could shoot up to 30 frames per second, but it's a high resolution 50 megapixel camera. The R3 is 30 megapixels and yes, you'll get 30 frames per second, but the resolution will be smaller. So is it in the same level as Sony? I don't think so. But then Canon wasn't saying that this was going to be its flagship camera anyway. It's kind of like an in-between the R5 and what we potentially think the R1 will be like. So it's at an interesting midpoint, but it should still be something, first of all, Canon is a reliable brand when it comes to photography, especially sports photography. So those that are familiar with the Canon ecosystem might be able to finally go from DSLR to mirrorless and jump right in with the R3 to be ready just in time for potentially the Olympics, maybe not. Maybe they'll have to wait a bit, but it'll be in camera professional hands in the near future, hopefully, and then you'll be able to see what this thing can do and if it's more practical and easy to use than the Sony cameras, which takes a little bit of fiddling around before you really get used to using a Sony camera for photography. But the A1, take nothing away from the A1. The A1 is still a spectacular camera, 50 megapixels, 8K video, while the R3 might be 6K raw tops, if they even include that. They might just limit you to 4K raw. But that wouldn't make sense to me because, for example, the Canon 1DX Mark III shoots raw internally, takes advantage of the full sensor, and does about 5.5K raw. Where in the R3, we don't know yet, they've only mentioned 4K video. I guess they're trying not to make the same mistake they did with the R5, where they touted all these amazing video specs and then the overheating pretty much killed any momentum that that camera would have had. So the R3, they're trying to tell you, okay, this is photo first, and then they kind of threw in video there. But I do have a feeling that when the video specs are released, though they won't be 8K raw, it's still gonna be impressive enough to be an option for those looking for just a little bit more resolution, raw recording internally, and the ability to still do like 4K 120, which I do think that they'll permit on the Canon R3 without overheating. And it'll be a nice alternative to the Canon C70, so I'm curious to see that. And one thing that I haven't heard of for a while was the R5C. Now I made a video speculating that the R3 is the, actually what the R5C was going to be because you haven't heard anything in months regarding that potential alternative to the R5. But we'll see. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, like the video and you'll make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus and I'm out. I'll come back to you guys when the announcement is made and we'll talk more about the R3. See you later and check out these videos too.